Hey guys, it's me, Bitter Steel here, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4. And today, instead of our regular 1936 start, we'll be hopping in in 1939. That can only mean one thing. That's right, we're going for Don't Die for Your Country. As Germany in 1939 occupy all of Poland and France without taking more than 475 casualties. Yes, that's a tall order. But I think I have a way to make it work. Now, a little disclaimer here. 1. This relies very heavily on AI behavior in the current patch, 1.9.3. I can vouch for this strategy working in the current patch. However, if Paradox decides to change AI behavior moving forward, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. If any AI aggression happens at all, this achievement is virtually impossible. 2. A lot of this strategy will require micromanagement and some strategic thinking. You're pretty much going to be playing chess with the AI. So some personal skill is going to be required. I'm sorry, it's just how it is. I, I cannot do this with just battle plans and clicking start. So with that out of the way, let's go. As you can see, we have a nice chunky Germany here. We leave Iron Man mode on and historical AI on. Don't be alarmed by this warning. It says we cannot get most achievements and that's right, but we only need the one. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like, consider subscribing for more of this content. And don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload new videos. Also, feel free to check out my Twitter. I uh, post some funny memes there and updates on the channel, as well as uh, check out our Discord. We've set up a nice little community. I'll leave links to both Twitter and Discord down in the video description below. Now, on to the video. Ah, there we are, 1939 Germany. Let's start things off. Spend some political power. We have a very large amount of PP. Let's add an infantry expert and an armored genius, Mr. Rommel here. Then a chief of the air force, Mr. Göring, air superiority, pretty great. The military theorist will pick Guderian for his 10% armor speed. And that's about all the PP you're going to spend. You can spend it on whatever you like after this, but it's completely irrelevant for the achievement. Research. I'm not even gonna pick any research, it's completely irrelevant, we won't be able to finish any one of these, but I'm not even gonna bother. Construction, same deal here, I'm not gonna bother, nothing will complete before we're done anyway. Military factories, well, you are gonna make some changes here, mostly just adding a bunch of... No, that's too many, I guess. Just add a bunch of military factories to light tanks. We will need a lot of light tanks for this to work. I have like 30, 25 to 30 factories on this should be fine. Now, as for the rest of these warnings up here, you can pretty much dismiss all of them. They're irrelevant. We're not even going to take a national focus. They're all irrelevant. We don't even have to take this one to kick things off in Europe. We already have our uh, justification on Poland done. Next up, the Air Force. We have a very significant Air Force. We're going to start out by parking them along the French border. Now these airports are relatively small so we're gonna have to shift these around so we don't overload any single airfield. I'm gonna do that later. I'm just gonna start by moving everything there, get that out of the way. Let's see, then we have the Navy. Yes, we have a relatively large Navy and they can start out by convoy escorting in the lower Baltics. You see we will be shifting a few troops over to the uh, Prussian pocket here near Konigsberg and we wouldn't want them to be intercepted by the Polish submarines or even the Royal Navy. We don't want any casualties happening when we can prevent them, so convoy escort here. Then there's still the submarine fleet. They're not really relevant just yet, so I'm just going to leave them for now. I'm gonna leave them at port. But I'm gonna give them their best admirals. So Dönitz can lead the fleet with the submarines and Reder gets the surface fleet. Next up, the military, well, the infantry. We are going to make armies, yes. An army of 24 units will hold the Konigsberg pocket and select only infantry. Split off any armor divisions. We'll be using them in a separate army later. Also, anything that's not pure infantry or a tank can simply be deleted. We won't need them, they'll just be a liability. So we're gonna get rid of this cavalry brigade here in Konigsberg. Then we need another army to hold the Polish border here. Let's see, all along here. That should be okay. And then split off all the motorized. They can be deleted, don't need them. And split off all of these motorized units as well. Don't need those either. And then tanks. There's a lot of tanks in here. They can split off in an own separate army. And then down south here, we can make another army. Yes, this will take a little bit of time. Just bear with me. Again, more armor here. Send them all to your dedicated army with the armor. 
and keep disbanding anything that's motorized or cavalry. And on the French border here, I think we have yeah, 14 and 10. That's 24 divisions. Sit these on the Maginot. Well, our side of the Maginot. That will do. Anything spare, simply deploy it to the armies on the Polish border. And this is what you're going to end up with. A full army of 24 infantry divisions for the Konigsberg pocket up here. Just assign a general. Any general will do. Then one army of 24 divisions. All infantry for the Polish border to the north. Another army, 24 divisions for the Polish border to the south. One army of 24 divisions for the Maginot, which leaves us with 11 tanks. These are our armored divisions. They can have Rommel or Manstein, doesn't really matter. I think Rommel's best. And that's all the army we need. Anything spare, we're simply going to delete. Don't want to risk any additional casualties. Now we're not quite done yet with the setup. As you can see, there's always one armor division in the Konigsberg pocket, the Panzerdivision Kempf. We're going to railroad it next to Danzig. Why? Well, the AI in the current patch has a very nasty habit of shifting this one division here, this very low strength division, off the line. They will shuffle that out somewhere else and bring another division in to reinforce it. But they are stupid because they don't pick any of the divisions that border it. No, they pick something from inland. So this tile is going to be empty for a little bit and we're going to exploit that with this armor division being very fast getting in there. This will allow us to take Danzig, giving us a little bit of a war score against Poland, involving them in our eventual peace deal. You'll see. You'll see. More setup to the south here. I'm going to make sure that as many of these tiles are covered as possible by the time hostilities kick off, which means railroading a lot of these divisions into their position. Otherwise, the tiles are going to be empty and that is going to prompt the Polish to respond. Much rather, they didn't. As long as there's units in those tiles, our units, the Polish AI is not very inclined to be hostile. So as you can see, I have manually selected the infantry divisions to strategically redeploy to their place on the front line so they will get there within a few hours if not a few days. No such problem on the Maginot front, there's always divisions deployed here properly. They'll just shuffle around to fill out the front line nicely. As for the Konigsberg pocket, once again, you can see there's uh, a few of their divisions are still stuck on this side of the Polish corridor here. We're going to gather everything that's stuck on this side and manually redeploy it to the port of Koslin so they can hop over to Konigsberg through this sea tile. We don't want them going through the Danish belts or the Eastern North Sea. They might run into the Royal Navy and get sunk, giving us casualties like that. That will be a bad, bad deal. And then finally, the remaining armor divisions other than Panzerdivision Kempf. We can send them over to see Wilhelmshaven. From Wilhelmshaven we will start a few naval landings. Yes, all along the shore here, from Dunkirk all the way down to Le Havre, we'll simply have one division land on every tile. Some landings will be contested, some landings will be entirely unopposed. Usually the French AI doesn't have the troops to man the entire coastline or even the time to properly respond. So five divisions will be landing along here. Or is it four? No, six. <laughs> Sorry, my maths aren't great. So six divisions will be landing in this little stretch of coast here between La Havre and Dunkirk. That leaves us with four additional tanks. We'll send those remaining four over to land near Cherbourg and the tiles next to it to capture the victory points around Brest, Lorient, Rennes and Nantes. Plan is to simply overwhelm the French AI so they don't really know where to respond to first. We don't want to fight the French, we just want to capture their victory points preferably without opposition. So that is the basic setup done. Again, a word of warning here, it may not work. Why? Well, sometimes French have troops in Paris, and if they have a division in Paris that is at full strength, it might just hold on long enough to A, cause casualties, which is bad, and B, allow for them to pull troops off the Maginot to reinforce Paris. If this happens, that's a restart, it's very unfortunate, but things are what they are. It's a very gimmicky achievement. I'm giving you the best start possible. Which brings us to the final item on our list, the Air Force. We're going to take all tactical bombers, all naval bombers and all heavy fighters. Yes, this is this is a lot of clicking, so bear with me here. All right, that is all our heavy fighters selected, all our strat bombers selected, and all of our naval bombers. They will be operating over the English Channel out of this Rhineland airport. The 
Heavy fighters will provide air superiority, while all of the bombing aircraft will provide naval strike. This is to give us naval superiority to pull off that naval landing. The rest of the aircraft, meaning all of these small fighter groups, as well as these support planes here, these uh, Stukas, can be deployed in the smaller airfields surrounding the French border. And they can operate over northern France using air superiority and close air support to give the tanks that make the landing the best possible odds of winning every battle, should they encounter one, with minimal casualties. They are going to have to spread them out over these airports. These are uh, quite small. And finally, these giant transport planes can simply be deleted. They're not much use. All right, before we kick things off, a little quick last check. Ah found a problem here. I really want to make sure every province here has a unit in it, otherwise it will motivate the enemy AI to start walking in there. Initiating combat, combat results in losses. And no, losses are bad. I think that's the only thing. Maybe these air wings not really divided up as well as I'd like, but that's not super important just yet. Just check on the airplanes every now and then to make sure none of these airports are overloaded. If they're overloaded, that's going to be terrible for our efficiency and we need every little edge we can get. So uh, yeah, just check in every now and then and redeploy planes to different airfields if they need to be redeployed. With that, I think we can unpause, keep the speed really low where you're comfortable playing. And let's go. And there we go. The AI always does this because it recognizes that this unit here in Danzig is very weak and it will not be able to compete with the strong opposition we've put in the tile next to it. So they're going to pull it out and replace it with a different, stronger unit. Problem is, that stronger unit has to walk quite away. Meanwhile, that will leave this tile unoccupied for a small amount of time. And we're going to exploit that small amount of time by driving in there with a very fast tank division. And the tile is empty. We are immediately going to have a chat with Poland and to declare. Manually select this tank division and drive into Danzig. Let's take a look at the airfields now. Oh yes, some of these are overloaded. I'm just going to stop here for a second and change the sizes of these air wings. They're really annoying me. I, I like to have everything standardized at 100. It's easy for maths easy to keep track of things and it's very easy to determine just how many air wings you can put in a single airfield that way there these are all standardized this should fit now just the other one as well all right now that's the airfield sorted now back to danzig and we've taken danzig great let's also immediately ship another unit in there set it to strategic redeploy that's this but because we need this tank division elsewhere yeah, let's ship this tank division over now the good thing about taking Danzig is A, it prevents the Allies from shipping reinforcements into Poland, because with reinforcement the Poles might decide to launch an attack. We don't want that. Any combat is bad, it's going to cause casualties, we don't want casualties. And two, this will involve Poland in the eventual peace deal, because well, we have taken some of their land. Let's keep our eyes on the lower Baltic Sea for now. So far we've not taken any casualties, if I'm wrong. No, I'm not wrong. We've not taken any casualties. And we don't want to either. The risk here now is shipping troops across this sea tile. They might become contested by the Polish navy that we've just exiled. That's why our navy is here to support. There, the Polish navy showed up trying to sink some of our convoys. But, uh, well, Kriegsmarine has their back. Alright, I believe everyone managed to reach their destination. Let's have a quick check here. Yes, all of these units are now in the Königsberg pocket. That's great redeploy the navy they no longer need to protect the lower baltic there's still supply convoys going across but the ai can sink as many of them as they please they don't count as manpower losses let's take the entire navy and ship them over to wilhelmshaven providing naval invasion support in the eastern north sea and the channel it is important though to actually ship them over to wilhelmshaven or to sit in port here doing us no good and to provide us with a little edge for the naval support, let's also set the submarines on naval invasion support. I mean, they're not much use, but they count as numbers for naval supremacy. And I believe that is enough naval superiority to get the tanks rolling. Let's see. Yes, it is. Our armor divisions are off and they're being escorted. We have vast air superiority over the channel, so they should arrive safely. Once they've landed, we'll pull the navy back out. We don't want to take casualties. We still have the UK to invade. It looks like the UK is already shipping troops across to uh, reinforce the French. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. This is turning into a bit of a worst case scenario regarding France. Usually you don't actually have anything on these ports other than one division in one of these three ports. Seems like the UK has some troops here now as well. That's okay, we can manage a little bit of combat. 
because our units are armored, they don't take as many casualties. Alright, now quickly assist with the land combat and take as many victory points as possible and rush straight for Paris. Let's manually drive these units to the victory points. Focus heavily on Paris, we need Paris as quickly as possible. We've also landed at Cherbourg, we can push those in as well. Landing at Dunkirk has finally succeeded, let's push into Little, never giving that unit that we just defeated a chance to recover. And with these divisions landing, let's push into the victory points and push hard. Et voila! Minimal casualties, I'd say. Let's have a check. Yes, that is quite minimal. 13 Germans lost in a worst-case scenario against the French. French are knocked out. The power of armor, ladies and gentlemen. Now, a few things here. We will get the event to establish Vichy France. Never establish Vichy France. No, we need the cores ourselves, so Germany will conquer all. Unfortunately, it seems they have a division here in the south. That is unfortunate. Now, let's have another look. Our armor is going to be key moving forward. As you can see, we have two types of divisions. We have the Panzerdivision, which is okay-ish. It's got four armor battalions and three motorized. And we can make this work. And we have the Leichte Division. Yeah, this isn't great. This, this is not great at all. <laughs> One light tank, that's hardly an armor division. Let's check our supplies here. Nice supply of light tanks, and we're going to use that to uh, beef up these divisions. Let's turn all of these into Panzer Division, giving them a little bit of an edge when we're moving into the UK. More hardness, fewer casualties. Perfect. We're also going to set up naval invasion orders of the UK now. We're gonna hop straight across the channel and hit all the tiles, well, 10 tiles, between Norwich and Plymouth. Our hope here is to overwhelm the British defenders and throw their AI into disarray. We cannot afford long drawn out battles, so these have to be quick skirmishes. There, that is 10 naval invasions along the shore. Try to keep them all in the English Channel. I've noticed that once you start hitting Cornwall, the naval invasion tends to pass through the western approaches. We don't have the naval power to contest two sea zones, so we're not going to bother. Leaves us with one free unit. Might as well use that to try and contain these uh, UK boys. I think they're just going to try and make a run for it through Nice. Now to take the entire air force and just park everyone on this airport here. Well, everyone except for the tactical bombers. Tactical bombers have the range. They don't need to move that close. And we'll turn them on the English Channel with everyone providing naval strike and air superiority. We will need to uh, control the English Channel. Also, something I haven't mentioned yet, but you've probably noticed, I've not called Italy in. We don't want Italy in this war at all. Italy is going to take casualties, giving them points at the peace conference, making them take things. I don't want Italy to take things. I want everything for myself. So do not call in your allies. And in one day, we'll be ready to pop across the channel and start wrecking havoc on the UK. All right, as you can see here, I've opted for a different approach around this little uh, British unit that was stuck in the French terrain. I've simply pulled off my unit from the port, allowed them to walk here, avoiding combat as much as possible. As you can see, it's still 13 casualties. I will simply line the troops that were on the Maginot up on this border here while still guarding the ports. This should be fine to contain this unit. I don't think they'll be pushing out anytime soon. Never ever engage in combat with a unit that is not an armored division. Now to launch our invasion of the United Kingdom and hope for the best. Worst case scenario, they really, really guard their ports and we're in for a nightmare of a landing. Okay, we've made landing. Let's quickly start pushing out. Rush the victory points and circle divisions without really fighting them too much. There will be some combat required to take victory points like London. We've also taken the airport in Sussex. Let's immediately shift over our air force. All of the fighters can hop over there and provide air support in Northern England, or rather Southern England as well as the close air support you can help there as well. They no longer need the naval strike, just the close air support. And the, the Navy the submarines can hold. 
while the surface fleet can now perform a convoy escort across the English Channel. I'm going to delete all these battle lines. I want to do all this maneuvering manually. Casualties looking still good, still good. To the south, well, they're shipping more troops in here. Let's put some more troops on those borders. This is an absolute worst case scenario, but I don't think they'll be inclined to push out from here. Back to uh, the island. these divisions out. Uh, I'm gonna leave one armored unit on this tile to cut everything off from Plymouth. I don't want to push in there. I want to avoid as much combat as possible. Casualties still good. They're rising, but they're still good. How are the UK looking? Uh, not too good, not too good. Just a few more victory points. I I'm guessing Bristol and some of these Scottish ones. Okay, I don't want to tangle with that unit. Just going to let it pass. Move into Leeds and Manchester. I'm going to let this armored unit push south, they'll leave, they'll leave Sheffield and I can move in from behind. Good. This unit's now leaving Bristol as well, leave it to do so, don't challenge that. Just keep the game running very slowly so you can respond to these things happening. Try and cut towards Glasgow. We've hit Hull. Yes, it's going to be. Excellent. I've left Bristol. I'm pushing into Cardiff. That should be it. Especially now, let's just stop combat here. It's not required. Just roll around them. No, nope, not gonna win that. Let's just push for Newcastle. How are we looking? 3% more. 3%. We can do 3%, can't we? Casualties, still excellent. We took Newcastle. Is that it? That is it. Alright, just wait for a peace deal. Let's quickly review our casualties. 135 casualties. Not bad. Not bad. There we go. The United Kingdom has capitulated. Now, we are alone in this peace deal. So we'll just pass a few times. Go to Poland. Take all states. Done. Let's go to Free France and take all states. Done. And if you feel like it, you can do the same with the UK. And done. Voila! And with that peace deal concluded, we now control all the territory of France and Poland. And we did not suffer more than 475 casualties. I think we may have suffered a few more in those final battles before the peace deal triggered. So, this has been my somewhat cheesy but extremely adrenaline-fueled guide for Don't Die for Your Country in La Resistance 1.9.3. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like this video, leave a like, consider subscribing for more of them, and hit me up in the comments with more achievements you want to see me try, or some challenges you want to see me suffer through. If you didn't like it, that's fine. Just hit that dislike button and tell me in the comments what I did wrong. I'm always looking to learn. This has been me, Bitter Steel. Have a good one. Goodbye.